بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه. Before we kick everything off, I'm going to introduce myself. My name is Abbas Khalif from London, student at Imam Muhammad bin Saud University. I've got a good friend, a good family friend, a good guest with us, Brother Suleiman, formerly known as Solo London. He used to be a rapper. Inshallah, he's going to tell us his experience and how he changed. He left the dunya so he can change and he jumped in his deen. Baba Suleiman, salam alaikum. How are you doing, Akhi? Alhamdulillah, how are you? How's everything going? Everything's fine, man. Good to have you here, good to have you here, Akhi. So, inshallah, today we're going to discuss topics, deep topics, especially for the youth that affect the youth, and how you changed from one side, from a, from a bad path or the wrong t on the wrong path, to the, the, the straight path, Salat al Mustaqim, inshallah. So, I wanted to ask you how you changed and how it affected you as a person, especially growing up with your friends and everything, and how, how, how did it change and how did you do it? Yeah, so um, as for those who know, my name, I go by the name, I used to go by the name of Solo London. My name's Suleiman. And um, yeah, I used to do music. I was heavily in music. And um, yeah, I started off young when I was like in year seven. I went to a school, actually I was raised in East London, so I went to a school, and my school was kind of like a media kind of school as well. So. And there was a lot of artists, there's a lot of artists that's in the game now that's big that went to my school. Yeah. And they, we kind of started up all together. So I started getting getting into writing from like year seven. So it's just something that I've always loved doing. It's been a hobby. So I moved to West London about 2006, late 2006. I moved to West London. I started doing it like low key here and there, you know, just a little playground, you know what I mean? Outside of school a bit as I carried on. Anyway, um, I started doing it more commercially, like YouTube, like probably from about 2011, like one video in a, a space of a couple months or something, you know what I mean? Slowly, but then that's when a lot of people started recognizing like, though, like the name started getting a bit out there. So anyway, um, there was a time actually in 2014, when about 14, the end of 13, where I wasn't really that big in the music thing. I wasn't really that big, but I was trying to seek knowledge. So I tried to seek knowledge. And um, as I was seeking knowledge, the thing was I was, uh, 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 I was still um, around the same people like daily. So that's, that's advice I could give people as well. Like I was around the same people daily. So I'll be, I'll be going to pray, I'll come back and I'll still be chilling with the people that that didn't pray and they'll, they'll still be on the roads and they're doing whatever they're doing. So that's what I was doing. So it, it ended up me slowly just missing one prayer, then missing two, then, you know what I mean? Getting back to my ways and straight, just like that, just with, just because of your companions, just like that, you can end up back to where you was like so quick. Yeah. Like the devil just told you, oh yeah, that's all right, man. Like, just, you know what I mean? Slowly but surely you'll be back. Anyway, I was back to what I was doing, uh, back to my music, back to whatever. And as I was getting in it this time, it was like I was getting much more bigger. You know what I mean? Things was happening quicker. Mm -hmm. Like, like I started uh, uh, when I'm doing video. And even me, I've always had Iman in it. Like, I've always had that. Okay, yeah, you. yeah. I've always had that faith. Like, I, I don't want to be doing this for 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 the rest of my life, yeah. you know what I mean? But it was just a hobby that I had doing, yeah. like, you know what I mean? So I carried on, I was doing it, I'll drop one video that's getting big, yeah. I'll drop another one, it's getting bigger, yeah. bigger. And then next thing you know, the thing that kind of, that more changed me was when the youth started coming up to me and, 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 and they looked like stars, like they were just shocked. Like, oh my God, like, they think, I, I was coming across as rude or anything, or but I wasn't really rude or nothing, but I was upset at the fact they was coming up to me and looking up to me like that, because who am I for you to look up to? I'm just a guy that's from the area that's just shed, like telling my story and just, you know what I mean? So when I see youths looking up to him, I'm like, nah, this is some, this is bigger than rap, like, you know what I mean? Anyway, things was just happening more quicker, bigger. And um, yeah, um, that's why we always like, subhanAllah, the youth, they think when a person has basically, for example, one brother, he prays, one, one of the youth, just for example. And then he's got friends, he's around friends that don't pray. That brother's thinking, yeah, Akhi, 
alhamdulillah, if you try to advise him, the one that prays, he's going to say, oh, at least I pray. But that's how it starts. Mm. You're going to be praying five times a day, yeah. then bang. Because yeah. of your friend, your, your friends are, your influ- and they influence you, it's going to go, go to four. Mm. Four, he goes to three, yeah. two, one, and then he stop praying at stop all. Praying at all. Yeah. That's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, one, uh, that's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned in the hadith, uh, the person is on a, upon the, uh, the religion of his companion and that he should look who he makes his companion that's why a lot of problems come from that the youth especially that they, they think to themselves yo I've got a friend that uh, he's, he, at least, at least like, I've got friends that are good at least they're, they're not into the trap they're not trapped they don't do nothing but at least they're, 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 they're like good people no it doesn't mean you got to, you got to be around good people and what I mean by good people is religious people, the people that are praying exactly. five times a day, exactly. that pray, yeah. they're in the mosque, yeah. read Quran. Yeah. A lot of people say, yo, my friends, at least they don't trap. No, don't look, don't look like don't look at that kind of angle. Mm. Look at the other angle. Mm. Yo, what can I do? Can I get can I can I can I get better friends? It's, of course. It's possible, it's easy, but the shaitan, he deludes a lot of people and makes them think your friends are good, your companions are really good. Why you need to change them? Yeah, no, true. subhanallah. That's so, like with um that's like with me, um, like that's one of the main reasons why when, before when I was seeking knowledge back in like 2014, one of the main reasons of me falling, like falling off track was I'll still be around people that's not on, that wasn't on what I was on. Yeah. Do you get it? But I had love for them for brothers and that. Yeah. So, but they're still listening to music. Yeah. Music is a big thing, you know, yeah. like it, it, music affects the heart and it? it aims straight for the heart. Yeah. Drugs, all of that stuff, they affect the brain and it. Yeah. So with music, it's like I'm around people that's listening to music daily. I'm not listening, like I wouldn't listen to music on my spare time. I've stopped at that time. And then slowly I'm just listening like, oh, what's that a new track? Oh, all right. Like, and I just came from doing a lot of music, you know what I mean? So I'm listen, I'm listen, I'm without me knowing someone's playing it, someone's I'm around people that's you know what I mean? So slowly that's how it gets. That's like that's like um when uh, uh um just for the sisters as well, when they're cleaning the house. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of sisters, they yeah. they don't listen to music, yeah. but when they're cleaning, yeah. they don't want to listen to music. Yeah. Slowly they'll be listening to music. Yeah. Like it will change you, man. It will change you, man. Definitely change me. Music, listening to music itself yeah. is one of the biggest ways that, uh, of, of helping me as well. Yeah. Like, of helping me. I mean, not listening to music, sorry, was a big, big, big way of helping me as well. Because when I, as soon as I cut out music and listening to no music, yeah, all the thoughts are like kind of, you're, you're thinking better, you're making decisions better. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. When I listened to music and I was doing whatever I was doing, there's a song stuck in your head while you're trying to do good and you're making wudu, there's something stuck in your head, like, there's, you know what I mean? So, yeah, man. Yeah. So, inshallah, we've got a couple of questions we're going to ask. The first one is, what kind of background did you grow up in as a, as a, as a Muslim? What kind of background? What made, you put, what made you go to that path, the music path? Um, I grew up in a, I grew up in a not, I didn't grow up in the most religious household, but, um, my mum, she's always been like so supportive of anything I do. Yeah. I, I'm a very close person with my with my mum. I never grew up with my dad, mm-hmm. so I've got a family of like I grew up with me, me two brothers and two sisters, mm-hmm. two of my sisters them on the Dean, mashallah. Mm-hmm. Both married now. One lives out there like Saudi, mm-hmm. like they're inspirational people in my mm-hmm. life right now. Mm-hmm. Even before when I was even off, whatever I was doing on the roads and music and stuff. So um. Yeah, I never grew up in the most Islamic house, but we did, of course, try and, and, and you know what I mean, and try to follow the path, but obviously everyone, uh, I went my own ways, my, everyone, you know what I mean? But, um, yeah, it's just, my mum, she's always been supportive of my music. Like, as in, like, when people used to tell her anything, like, family members or anything, you know, like, you know those strict ones, and like, what's this guy doing? And the, my mum used to be like, whatever he's doing I'm supporting it and this is that one day he'll end up not liking it yeah. you get it boom 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 but that's what she used to say one day he'll end up but you know what I mean so my mum she used to always just be like yo whatever you're supportive of doing I'm supporting you so yeah man I used to sometimes think oh imagine if my magic was like more of the woman of 
proper pushing me like, yeah. what are you? Yeah. Don't, <laughs> don't be t- doing music or this, this, that, rare, rare. Would I have been, you know what I mean? But my mum's always been of, she always respect my decision. And when I made the decision, I told her, listen, oh yeah, I'm not looking to do this music thing no more. Like I've, I've realized like a lot since I've done it, people looking up to it's like, it, it, it's like I'm a, a idol kind of thing. Like my, my sister sent me a video what it basically said about, because I never have too much knowledge on the Quran. So my sister basically sent me a video about what it said on the Quran about idol talks. That's basically music. Yeah. So it said idol talks and who who uses it to um, like astray someone off the path. There'll be a deep torment for them, like in hellfire and this, this, that. A lot of people will be like, yeah, solo, yeah, keep going. Soon blow, this, this, that. But when I'm down there in the ground by myself, it's not... Soon blow, I'm, yeah. I'm getting blown down there, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So I'm the only one that's there going to be taking that. So at night, I'll be sleeping while I'm doing like shows, shows. I was doing shows that never made me happy. Girls, it never made me happy. Yeah. Money, it never made me happy. When I started to see money from this whole music thing, money's coming in and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, this is going to end up. I used to get more scared, more scared because I'm thinking, rah, it's going to be hard for me to turn away from this because... I'm getting money from this now. I'm, uh, 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 I'm affiliated with a group. And the people that I was with in a group, like respect to all of them, none of them was Muslim, innit? Mm-hmm. So they all looked at it as a long-term life thing. This is what they're looking to do for life. Mm-hmm. And I was, I, it's something I love doing, so I was with them. Mm-hmm. But I wasn't looking to do this for life. Mm-hmm. But when am I going to stop? Mm-hmm. I never know, I could, I could die tomorrow, I could die next week. Mm-hmm. So when people ask me stuff like, how did you give it up? Mm-hmm. Like, how can you, what if I would have, if you actually believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you be, believe in the day of judgment and you believe, you believe in everything that happens, you should know that if, if you die in the state, you know where you're going. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. If I would have died in a state of what I was doing and, and, and all, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So yeah, man, alhamdulillah, I, I, I prayed, I prayed, I prayed, I prayed like to, for, for God to, to guide me and give me strength for me mm-hmm. to stop because it wasn't easy, innit? Yeah. I prayed, I prayed. Ramadan came in. I, I, that's the best moment. Yeah. I stayed in the mosque for a week. Yeah. I done intercaf. Yeah. While I was doing intercaf, I prayed, I prayed. Uh, my iman became stronger, stronger, stronger. Yeah. I, I was just been. I was just ready. I was waiting for that time. I was waiting for Ramadan to come. Like yeah. just before Ramadan is when my sister sent me a, a message of what it says about idol talk. I bust the tear. Mm-hmm. I was crying from the fear of Allah, you know what I mean? From what I was doing and I know it's like so many times when I was doing what I was doing, it's like I was hiding away from the, the truth. It's like I'll do what I'm doing, I'm hiding from the truth. Because I, I love music, I'll do what I'm doing. But all of the effects that it's doing, I know what's happening, like, but I'm hiding from it. So yeah, alhamdulillah, it feels like for anyone that's doing anything like trapping as well, as soon as you stop that and you think of, just trying to do, give it up for the sake of Allah. Allah opens so many different doors for you, so many different ways. For, like you feel much more happier. Like right now, I can sleep at ease. I go sleep happy. I wake up happy. I'm more in touch with my family. I'm more. I'm more. Like there's nothing that can. Good. Like there's nothing bad that could break me. Nothing good that could make me kind of. You know what I mean? So yeah, man. I'm just. I'm just happy, man, and just Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Yeah, there's too much. There's so much going on in my head. I don't know how to, but yeah. Zakallah khair. As you know, we're both from Hayes. Give the people a brief summary about the ends and how things are here and growing up, especially like you mentioned, yeah. 2006 you moved here. From now on, 2006, how was that like, especially for youth Muslim youth trying to go on his deen and everything? How 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 was it growing up in this area? Um, well, this area is not the nicest area, yeah. and um, of course, there's a big, big gap between the brothers that are practicing and trying to do good, and the brothers that are on the roads and that. So, I feel like we need to more communicate with each other. Yeah. We need to uh, uh, find ways of 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 trying to help one and one another instead of us all ignoring each other mm-hmm. and letting this guy do that and this guy do that and. Because the love in Islam is real. It's real brotherly love. Like no matter what color you are, what what everything is real blood. Like love in it. Mm-hmm. So if we see someone on the wrong path or doing something wrong, we should advise them. We should definitely advise them and 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 
try to help them out. That's like with me, when I was doing music, there was 99% of people that's telling me to carry on, push. You're going to do this and you're going to, you know what I mean? I was on my way to, you know what I mean? Push. There was probably like one or two people telling me, brother, give this up, man. Like, for the sake of Allah, dude, you're good at what you're doing, this is that, just give it up. It's not worth it for you at the end. And then people wasn't even my close friends like that. There's people that I didn't even know like that, but they're saying that to me for the love, for the sake of, you know what I mean? They loved me for the sake of Allah, you know what I mean? As a brother. So I've always respected the people that's told me, that told me good stuff. And as me, as a person, as an, I used to do music and that, when I used to see someone doing something that was wrong and I'd give them advice, and even when someone would be like, what? How can you give me advice? Will you do this, this, that? You're doing all this? I never used to take it too offensive. You know what I mean? I'll still give the person advice. But a lot of people will be like, yo, why don't you give this guy advice? This, this, that. Oh, who am I to give him advice, man? I'm doing this and that and that and that. Boom, boom, boom. You, you get what I'm saying? So I think um, with the whole, the hay situation, it's just, you know, if everyone just comes together and we all just bring everyone closer and everyone talks then we can all see what everyone needs to do everyone needs to have goals everyone needs to have you know what i mean because there's a lot of people that's that's misguided and they're confused because with music yeah so with music there's a lot of um a lot of kids that watch music and i've clocked it from with this new generation and that they kind of they, they see people with videos they've got gold chains nice cars they've got girls everything and they're just talking about trapping 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 mm -hmm. So then the person would look at, a young guy would look at that and like, bro, for me to get that, I need to be trapping, trapping, trapping. Mm -hmm. So the guy would leave whatever he's doing, his uni, everything, boom, who hit the roads, who would start trapping. Mm -hmm. But then he finds out that this trapping money, he's not getting as much money as these people are getting. So he's like, I need to go harder. So you, you, they go harder, getting a bigger amount and this, this, that, then you get arrested. You're doing a stretch now, you're doing, doing eight years and doing this big time and you know what I mean not saying that everyone that does these music videos are loose balling or anything but it's just that image in it a lot of people that do this music thing they have to do it images a lot of people behind them that's pushing them yeah. that's that's putting videos there and putting I mean putting girls there and putting nice cars and everything there because they want people to watch you know what I mean it's entertainment they want people to watch but there's people that's here that don't have any source of income in that so they're watching they're like I want to get that yeah. You know what I mean? So they're busy trying to do that. And with the females, it's like a lot of a lot of the guys that's on the roads and that, they're not att attracted to the... They, they, they wouldn't want to move to the girl that's wearing hijab and niqab and a good girl. But they want a good girl, but they don't want to... They can't move to because of the lifestyle they're living. So the girls, they'll take off their hijabs and go to these shisha places and clubs and this is that to attract a guy like that because... You know what I mean? It's, it's mad, man. It's mad. So at the same time, for a lot of guys that's trapping, and this is that trapping is affecting a lot of people around you, affecting your life, your family's life, and it's just and and it's something that you're in for a long time, a long time. Like I'm not gonna lie, if it wasn't for the dean, I would have still been doing that now. I would have gave up. It's it's mad. It's crazy, man. Like the trap thing is actually a trap. Like you, when you're in it, it's very hard for you to get out very very hard for you to get out you have to have deen you have to have patience and you just have to have you have to put your trust in allah that's when the best things happen for you man yeah. the best things ever yeah. let me go back to the point that you mentioned that that life whether it's music life or trapping life or whatever that it was a depressing life allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in surah nahal man amila salihan min dhakarin aw untha wa huwa mu'min fala nuhyiyannahu hayatan tayyiba Whoever does good, good deeds, righteous deeds, and he's a believer, male or female, we will give him a best life, a blessed life. So the condition to have a good life and depression free is the first one is good, doing good deeds. And the second one is male or female and you're a believer, you have faith. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentions in Surah uh, surat, uh, he says, Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Surah Ra'ad, he says, Ala bi dhikrillahi tatma'innu al-qulub. Really, the remembrance of Allah makes, uh, keeps hearts uh, at ease or at rest. So, 
the only way that a person can stay away from that, that life and have a blessed life is that whenever he does good and he's closer to Allah and he's obedient and he stay away from sins, yeah. he'll have a good life. That's true. It's not hard. That's true. It's not it's not hard. That's true. These days, how many scientists and blah 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 they're trying to look for cures for depression, blah blah blah. They always mention it. Yeah, yeah. Nonsense pills. No, you don't need that. Yeah. The more you're closer to Allah, the more happy you be. Yeah, right. Look at the uncles in the mosque, for example. Yeah. There's some uncles, may Allah bless them yeah. and preserve them, that they don't miss one salah in the mosque. That's true. They're, they're not the richest people. They mm -hmm. don't miss one salah. But look how happy they are. Talk to them. Happy. If you talk to them, they're, they're, they're living one of the best lives. Yeah. Also, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi mentions in the hadith oh, that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala gives this, this dunya to whoever he likes mm -hmm. and whoever he dislikes. Mm -hmm. Look at these rappers that you mentioned before. Mm -hmm. Some of them are ballers. Some of them are rich, some of them have the best cars, all those footballers. By the end of the day, he killed himself. What's the point? All that, he kills himself because of what? He hasn't got good, firm faith. Allah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned that he, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala gives his dunya to whoever he likes and whoever he dislikes. And he only gives firm faith to one person. The person that he likes. Firm faith is to one person. The person Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala likes and wants good for him. So that's the way to obtain a happy life, you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you're close to him and you have a connection with the Lord. Nothing else. All these cars, all these nonsense, all these thingy, all these lives that the youth are running to these days and the fake life and the person, on top of that, he, he'll act fake because mm. the only thing he's in it is for the money. That's the truth. That's but when you look at the practicing brothers, a lot of the brothers, look at that. It's, they Islam, they, it's upon Islam, their brotherhood. It's not upon nothing. It's, it's for the sake of Allah. The believers are brothers. Whatever race you are, black, white, yellow, Chinese, Islam takes all that away. And it, the, only, the, only, the only thing that brings people together is Islam. Whatever color you are, the, the believers are brothers. Whatever race they are. Look at the beauty of Islam. So inshallah, we're going to move, move on to the next question. What would your advice now, as we all know, you did well in the music, in the music um, scene and all the industry. What would your advice be to the upcoming brothers or youth that want to go into that scene? What would you like the music industry? And I think that's the only way to become happy. And wealth is the only thing that will make them happy. What would your advice be to them? My advice would be seriously, do not go there. Like, do not. Like, stay far away from that. You know what I mean? That's not where happiness lies at all. Misery, there's nothing but misery. It's like now, there's a lot of artists in that. They've got into this game. They, 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 they've, they've started taking all types of drugs. All types of drugs to make them... You know what I mean? Like, it's because they're not getting it. They're thinking, in the, they're, they're thinking to themselves, why am I feeling like this? I've got girls, I've got money, I've got this, 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 this. But there's a hole missing, yeah. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So they're not feeling it, you know what I mean? They're not feeling it in their heart. Mm -hmm. And that's Iman that they're missing. Mm -hmm. They're missing their connection with Allah. Mm -hmm. It's like you're a lost soul, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. But the worldly things, like, you know the worldly things? Just because a guy's got worldly things, mm -hmm. he's, got he's got money, he's got a nice car, this is that. That don't mean he's blessed. Yeah. That does not mean you're blessed. Yeah. This dunya is nothing, mm -hmm. like, it's, it's, it's literally nothing. Mm -hmm. So the things that you're with it, in it, and you're thinking, I've got this, 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 that, I've got more than this guy and this guy, you, you actually don't, you actually don't, you know what I mean? You're missing that inside you, and the more you keep running away from it, the more you're going to become depressed. You don't know why you're depressed, you're going to be depressed. You're going to chase it and think that's the right way. I thought music was the right way. I was good at it. I was getting money, I just, but it was not the right way. Every night I went to sleep, I felt something heavy on me. Mm -hmm. I know if I die, I could feel my, it's like I can, I can feel my sins. Mm -hmm. it, it was just like, alhamdulillah, like, even though with, with my music, I didn't, I, had, I always had the amount in it. So I never used to do as much as I could. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? There's some things I would just lack off a bit. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, no, nah, don't push yourself too much, man. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? This is not right, like, you know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of things I would not use my name to, to advantage, mm -hmm. to get girls and all that stuff there. And I'll just work hard with my music, mm -hmm. my shows, this, this, that, mm -hmm. and just strive for that. That's what I was doing. Yeah. But I was not happy, nothing, I was not happy. So my advice is, mm -hmm. 
to all the youths that's watching this, that's that's thinking about doing music and people gassing them up and everyone's going to say to you, yeah, yeah, keep going, yeah, yeah, soon, blow, this, this, that. But, bruv, as soon as you're down there by yourself and as soon as you're getting, everyone's changing on each other, like, there's no love outside of Islam. There's no love. There could be a guy that you've knew for, known for 10 years, you've been chilling with him 10 years, just like that. You and him just a parted ways. You don't talk no more. You're not, you know what I mean? Over certain little, you've done, you know what I mean? So there's no love. Islam is where, it's where there's true love and true guidance and true happiness. So as much as, as much as you're going to run away from it, if you're a brother that's doing this music thing, the, as far as you run away from it, trust me, there's no running away. There's no running away. So, yeah. Thank you. And, and as I, 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 I want to say for, for, for you, if you keep trying and you don't get it and you keep coming back, don't look at people and think, because there's a lot of people that will try and they'll stop and they think, oh, they've got off track. But Allah loves those who repent. So if you look at someone that's repented, it's like right now people, I've had a couple of people say, oh yeah, he's gone to, to f focus on his dean and that, oh, he'll be back soon, yeah, yeah. Uh, a, a year or two or something. It's just that, brother, I'm never coming back. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Inshallah. Um, inshallah, but I'm never, trust me, man, I ain't ever coming back. So I know, that's what I'm trying to say. Don't ever be scared to, if you feel like, to try again. Yeah. This is for the brothers and sisters. If you failed before in doing something, try again. Allah loves those who try again. It's about how hard you come back in it. So yeah, man. Yeah, Jadakallah, you mentioned a good point that a lot of people, that's what happens. They they want to, they start practicing, but bang, they fall in, like they fall into the trap and they go back yeah. to the old ways. Yeah. And Allah, as you mentioned, Jadakallah, that Allah, inna Allah yuhibbu tawabin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those that, that, those that repent yeah. and those subhanahu wa ta'ala, those that seek his forgiveness. Yeah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves to forgive. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. But it's upon the slave that he should strive like a lot of subhanallah as well. So, some of the people, a lot of people these days, Muslims, or some of the Muslims that they strive so hard in Ramadan and then bang after Ramadan they fall off her back in it. Mm. They're back to go back to the old ways. Yeah. Which is wrong. Subhan Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us so we can worship him throughout the whole year. Yeah. Not only a couple of months. Yeah. So the only way a person can change, especially like, like as you mentioned before, is they change his surroundings first. If he's serious, he makes he makes toba and if he's serious, he 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 he, he changes he changes his surroundings. So inshallah I'm gonna give you a couple of a couple of more questions. So, as you mentioned, that you stayed in Ramadan, you stayed in the last ten days at Masjid Quba in Hayes. Did yeah. at there. Yeah. How did first Ramadan affect you as a Muslim, and especially the last ten days? Because I remember yeah. seeing you yeah. towards the the one day the night before Eid, and you were really really happy. So, how did it affect you, and change you as a person? Well. um before I, before I, before Ramadan, I had intentions, basically of changing and everything. I had big intentions. So the last ten days during Ramadan, I said, that, "You know what? The last ten days, I'm gonna I'm gonna end up staying in the mosque. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm gonna do." I stayed in the, the first couple of days. I stayed in the mosque. I was not missing no prayers. I'm going to all the tarawih. You know that sometimes you be fasting, mm -hmm. but you wouldn't go to the tarawih and that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You just, you pray a couple of prayers, you know what I mean? I'm going to every single prayer, I'm going to the Traweh. It opened up my heart. I've never felt like that before, ever in my life. Like I felt like Allah's the turn of the hearts, right? So I felt like, I have just felt like, I just, I don't know how to explain it. It's just, it's like my heart got turned. I, I actually loved obeying like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, learning more knowledge that like I loved. I wanted to learn more and more and more. I'd wake up wanting to land and, and happy that I felt like I was just washing away mm -hmm. all my stress and everything like. So I'm not gonna lie, the, I would recommend that for anyone, anybody like if if we if we make it to the next Ramadan inshallah, last ten days staying if you're feel, if you're feeling like if you're feeling like when you're coming towards Ramadan that you might not benefit or you might think you know what I'm not, my iman's not that strong. 
last 10 days, stay in the mosque because that's going to keep your energy to the next Ramadan. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And even if you're not, if you haven't benefited from that, read more Quran, mm -hmm. read more, ask yourself, why am I here? Am I, am I here to do this? Am I here to, you know what I mean? Look into, look into the Quran, read the hadiths, look at the story of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Look at the, look at the way he was, look at all the other prophets, look at their lives. You know what I mean? It will definitely inspire you. And the words, if the, and if the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala don't inspire you and make you want to, then I don't know. Like there was one verse, I, I think it said something about the hearts being sealed. Yeah, the hearts being sealed and they won't, they won't. Don't compliment, compliment on the, uh... Don't affect on the Quran. Yeah. Like the heart's sealed. Yeah, the heart's sealed and they won't. Subhanallah. Imagine if we're one of those that our hearts is sealed. Yeah, yeah. Our hearts is sealed. Nothing we say, nothing I say, nothing he says, nothing anybody says to you is going to affect you. Imagine if you're one of those. Subhanallah. Jazakallah khair for the topic and also the things that you mentioned. Black, like we're going to stop and we're going to go back to the, the, the topics, like especially. I wanted to mention that the Prophet Sallallahu the best man, the best person to walk this earth and a role model, he, well, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala offered to make him a prophet and a king, like Sulaiman and Dawood, the two prophets. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't take the offer and he was asked and he said, this dunya, he was asked and he said, uh, uh, that this dunya is is nothing for me. It's nothing. It's 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 it's, it's like it's, it's it's nothing special. And also, that's how you know this dunya is nothing to, to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That he mentioned in the hadith, those that pray two units of fajr, yeah. two units of fajr, yeah. sunnah al fajr yeah. before the prayer, yeah. is better than whatever this whatever is, is in this dunya. Just two units, two units of prayer. Just two rak'ahs. Two rak'ahs, basically. Yeah. Before Fajr, if you pray that, the Prophet said, it's better than this dunya and what's in it. That's how you know this dunya is nothing. Yeah. If two units of prayer is better than it. And how long does that take the, the, the Muslim to perform them two units? Five minutes, maybe? Less than, less than that, maybe. SubhanAllah, that's how you know this dunya is nothing to the Prophet and to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the saddest thing is that we run, we chase it, we chase it, we chase it, and we think we're going to stay here forever. We think in our mindset we're guaranteed to reach next Ramadan. We're guaranteed that our good deeds will be accepted. But look how, if you look at the righteous predecessors, they were so scared that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted one deed of mine, I would, I would, I would rather die. That's how it's scared. If they knew, if they knew Subhana, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala accepted one of their deeds, death is better than that. So that's how the mu'min should be. The mu'min shouldn't think, ah, oh, be self amazed and Madan, I did the best. I did everything. My deeds, one hundred percent, got accepted. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Inna ma yataqabbaru Allahu min al-muttaqin." Allah Subhanahu wa Taala accepts for those that are pious. And if we, look, if we ask ourselves like that question, how does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept the deal? On each day, the saddest thing, some brothers and sisters, on each day, they went on a mad one. Wherever it's clubbing, wherever, wherever it's, 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 it's uh, going to shisha bars, wherever it's doing madness. And all that night, they were crying, the night before, the two nights before, they were crying in prayer, oh Allah, forgive me, oh Allah, forgive me. The person, as mentioned as well, the righteous predecessors, they used to, they say one of the signs that a person, his good deeds got accepted, is that when he came, when he performs a good deed, he follows up a good deed with another good deed. That's one of the signs that you see your sins, your your your, your righteous deed got uh, accepted. So, uh, so we Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to the straight path and make us those that sin, their sins are forgiven. Make us those that are blessed in dunya and make us those also that whenever we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala something, He grants us it. Amen. And also, if we look at Surah, uh, Surah Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the ayah, فَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُ رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا 
وما له في الآخرة من خلاق. For those mankind that asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make dua and they asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us this dunya. But they forget their hereafter. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions after that, he mentions وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُ رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنًا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنًا وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّرِ Those that ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the best in this world, the best in the hereafter, and to be saved from the, the hellfire. So it goes to show that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made this dunya and it's nothing to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's nothing literally. So it's upon us that we strive really hard as we strive in Ramadan. And also we stay away from all this stuff that take us away, takes us away from the remembrance of Allah. For verily, the soul only works on the remembrance of Allah. That's true. That's true. If you listen to music and if you listen to whatever you're trapping or doing stuff, you no matter how, no matter how much money you get here, you'll never be content. You'll be depressed. You can be getting millions. These rappers, all these guys, all of the youth, they get deluded. They're thinking, and these famous people, they're thinking, you know, they have the best life. They have the girls. They have everything. But if they really knew, all them people that they look up and looking up to and are taking as an example, they're the most depressed people. Depressed, stressful people. I've seen it, man. Stressful, literally. So, as 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 you've seen, especially in the music scene, and also look at the best example, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam how happy he was and how we treat people and how of a beautiful, amazing human being he was. All throughout, he was connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The only way that we can benefit and live a good, happy life is that we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we be it to him. Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we listen. Whatever he says, don't do, we leave it. That's the only way to live in this dunya. Jazakallah khair, akhi. May Allah bless you. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us firm upon our religion. Jazakallah khair for all, everything, all the benefits he mentions, especially to the youth. And also, may Allah bless you. Inshallah. Jazakallah khair. Barakallah fiqh. Thank you for coming on. May Allah bless you. Jazakallah khair. Thank you for having me as well. And um, I hope this video helped to, to help a lot of people in the situations because I've got a lot of messages, people asking a lot of questions that we've answered. So yeah, um, Zakala Khair, man.